working on, etc., etc. So if you're looking for regular content from me, that's definitely where you'll find it. But I'm going to ask you at the beginning of this video to please like or comment. Leave me even a tiny emoji if you're watching this. You have no idea how much commenting and liking videos helps us YouTube creators, especially ASMR creators, beat out the crazy YouTube algorithm. Okay, that's enough. I have a missing persons case for you. Um, I was gonna originally do another case, but I thought that this one is extremely important. I feel like missing persons cases need a lot more attention than they're getting in the media. So, we are going to talk about Tyler Goodrich. And I did not pull up my notes, so bear with me. I just finished filming for Patreon, so I have to switch gears here. All right. Tyler comes from a big family. He had three sisters and a younger brother. He was raised in Bennett, Nebraska. His family moved there when he was just two years old. His father, Lonnie, is a retired school teacher, and he said that he has a story that exemplifies his son as a person. When Tyler was in elementary school, our cooks always provided cookies to the kids at lunchtime. So Tyler came home one day and he said, Dad, the cooks make us cookies every day. Can we make cookies for the cooks? So they made cookies so Tyler could take them back to the cooks to repay them for their kindness. Lonnie said about his son, he's just a good person. I would say he was always a champion of the underdog. As an adult, Tyler moved to nearby Lincoln, about a 20 minute drive from Bennett where his family still resides. Tyler persevered through everything. He pushed himself. He believed in excellence. He strove to be his best at things. He wanted to get his master's, and he got it in 14 weeks and four days. He always told me he was going to be a warden. Lonnie said it was truly his ultimate goal. So a lot of this information came from Dateline, and they spoke with one of Tyler's friends, a woman named she said, Tyler and I have been friends since kindergarten. He's one of those people that just make friends easily. According to Rachel, Tyler was extremely active and he loved to be outdoors. He was really into running. He liked to run marathons. And she said she would call him a decorated marathoner. He took really good care of himself and he liked to run. So about eight years ago, Tyler met a man named Marshall Vogel. They met at a bar in Lincoln, a gay bar. And Marshall said, I remember walking by him and he was just standing there. And the two of them made eye contact and that was it. Tyler is a very driven person. He's very strong-willed. And if he set his mind to something, he's going to do it matter what it is, Marshall said. The pair fell in love and about two years after meeting in that bar, got married. Marshall said, I always knew I wanted kids and Tyler did too. So the two of them decided that they were going to foster children and then adopt. But before their license was approved, Marshall said they got a call from the agency, and they said, we have a 14-year-old that can be there in three hours. Tyler and Marshall talked it over and agreed to foster the boy. It just felt right. Marshall said they began the adoption process about two years ago, and then they got another call. Our youngest came to live with us before the first adoption was final, Marshall said adding that their two children are half-siblings. The adoption for their youngest child was finalized in April. He was an addition to the family we didn't know we needed. Lonnie Goodrich said of his son that adopting those two boys, his son Tyler loved those boys. He was big on family. In fact, the last time that father and son saw each other was 
them knew that they loved each other very much. It was just maybe that um, our marriage wasn't supposed to be forever, he said. We'd previously talked about what a perfect night would be, and Tyler said a movie night with our kids and pizza just hanging out. So that's what they did. Marshall and Tyler's oldest son was at work that night, so it ended up just being the two of them and their youngest son. After their youngest son went to bed, Marshall said he and Tyler wound up getting into an argument. Things got a little heated and slightly physical between them. Apparently, Tyler kind of pushed Marshall, and Marshall ended up calling 911. And when he was on the phone with 911, Tyler left through the garage. And Tyler Goodwich has not been seen since. Investigator Jeremy Schwartz of the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office confirmed that authorities were called to Tyler and Marshall's house that evening to respond to a domestic disturbance. A 911 call was placed by Marshall, and it referenced an argument between he and his spouse Tyler. The call was received at 7.47 p.m. We dispatched two patrol deputies to the residence to take a report of the disturbance between Tyler and Marshall. As a result of this, those deputies make, made contact with Marshall. Investigator Schwartz said that they have a recording of Marshall, I'm sorry, that Marshall had taken of the argument that night. It's an audio recording of the argument, or I would more describe it as a conversation between Tyler and Marshall. Now, that audio has not been publicly released, but I thought it was kind of strange that Marshall was recording all of these, like, arguments and stuff. And he said in one interview, I guess, that he started recording their arguments or conversations because like, it would come back to, oh, I didn't say that, oh, I, I never said that, or, oh, I said this, or, oh, so he said he was tired of this script, like, getting flipped on him, so he could go back and say, oh, you did say that, here it is. I don't know, I found that kind of weird, um, and I really wouldn't want, like, the police listening to me and Sean's arguments. I don't know, tell me if you think that's weird, that he was, like, recording their fights, Anyway, sorry, got off track. Authorities were unable to locate Tyler that evening. When deputies arrived, he was not president, president, present. And when they attempted to locate him in and about the property, they couldn't find him. Deputies left about a half hour later. Schwartz said they later checked into Tyler's movements to confirm the timeline of events for the day. The folks at Costco were great, and they provided us video surveillance of Tyler at Costco, picking up pizza for his family. That occurred at about 5.30. The investigator also noted he did not seem to be in any distress on the security video from Costco. He was dressed well. He did not look disheveled or unkempt. He was just a dad picking up pizza and going home. He immediately went home, and the pizza was shared with his family. On Saturday morning, authorities received another call. Marshall again called 911 to report that Tyler had not come home, and that he was last seen the night before when he left the residence. This phone call came in at 9.35 a.m. Tyler was reported to have been wearing gray shorts, a partial zip-up running sweatshirt that was also gray, and running shoes the night before. Authorities believe that Tyler had both his wallet and his cell phone with him when he left home. So Saturday and Sunday, immediately following the report made by Marshall, law enforcement works side by side with Tyler's family. Tyler's father said that when they heard he was missing, they immediately thought it was unusual. According to Lonnie, his son was very connected online and he would never go very long without talking to someone. He laughed and said Tyler couldn't be off his phone for five minutes. And there had been zero communication to anyone 
since Friday, November 3rd. No mention of him, no sightings, no phone calls, no texts, nothing. Lonnie also told Dateline that Tyler's never done this before. He said, except once three decades ago when he was little, he did that thing that every little kid does and he packed a bag and told dad he was running away. But he never even made it out the door, Lonnie said. So Tyler's friend Rachel agreed. Tyler would never just take off without telling anyone. She said that on the weekend he disappeared, Tyler had big plans. He'd signed up for a marathon in Lincoln, and he went missing Friday night, and that Sunday was the good life half sea, which apparently is a really big deal in Lincoln. It's a team event, so there's three or four other runners like on your team, and Tyler let his team down because obviously he didn't make it to this marathon. Rachel said that was unusual because not only did he love to run, but he didn't like to let people down. By the evening of Saturday, November 4th, most of Tyler's friends and family had heard that he was missing, and they began looking for him. By Sunday morning, the full-blown search efforts had begun. The response was immediate and huge. The searches continued for weeks, and they kind of definitely have tapered way down because no one has any idea where to search anymore. They checked trailers that di- trailers. I cannot speak today. Trails that Tyler was known to frequent, but no luck. Nothing. Not a shoe, not a shirt, not a phone, nothing. No one has used his credit card or debit card. Nothing has ever surfaced. Rachel said, we were trying to connect with law enforcement as well, so they knew that we were doing this, you know. They were great. They came out and kind of actually showed us how to conduct a search, like what to do if we found any evidence. They also worked with the Lincoln Parks and Rec Department, who helped them create a virtual map that marked off which quadrants had been searched in the parks, which is amazing. When you got done searching a certain area, you could click it and almost highlight the area you just walked, that quadrant, and that. And what that did was help us, help to show us which parts had been searched and what hadn't been searched, Rachel explained. And then we shared that information with the sheriff's office so they knew, hey, we don't need to cover this portion of Wilderness Park because this group of 100 people has just done that. Rachel, who has a background in communications, decided to make a missing persons poster for Tyler. She jumped on Canva and just made a poster with the very limited details that they had. Not long after she created this, they were printed and being passed out. They worked with a local sign company, so there were yard signs everywhere. They went door to door, handing them out, posting them on companies, you know, like bulletin boards anywhere that they could. They've heard from people around the country, as far as San Francisco even, that Tyler's posters had made it that far. We have a trucking company in town, and they put these posters in every truck for them to have, but also to hand out if they can leave them at hubs, Lonnie added. Investigator Schwartz confirmed that authorities have pulled out all the stops to search for Tyler. We used the Nebraska State Patrol use their helicopter. We were able to mutually aid with a partnering agency, and they used their helicopter. We have access to drones in our agency, so we use drones to go up and try to locate Tyler. We use canines, but we had no success. Through the searches with the family and searching the nearby areas, through aerial surveillance, we were just not able to locate Tyler. He also confirmed Sorry, my stomach is disrespectful. That no personal items have been found that they believe belong to Tyler. Authorities also looked into Tyler's digital footprint. You know, in this day and age, our lives are so connected to the digital world, and it's one of the first places that they started. They went after anything and everything from cellular devices to social media to financial records, Shora said. His digital footprint in time right now has gone dark. Authorities have released a short clip of security footage from a blink camera at Tyler and Marshall's house the night that Tyler went missing. It is the belief that the person on the video is Tyler running from the residence. Based on everything we know, Investigator Schwartz said, this person is Tyler. Now I watch this and it is a junk video. <laughs> You, you can tell it's a guy, kind of. So it says, Lonnie.
saw the video and now it's been made public of what we believe is Tyler leaving the house, Rachel said. However, Lonnie is not confident that the figure on the video is his son and neither am I and it's not my kid. It's a really grainy video. I mean, we all agree we wish that it was way more clear of a video. It's very, very short, maybe just a few seconds of someone leaving the back of the house. And that's about the extent of it. It looks like he has like a light or something, so he may have like had his phone. But then again, okay, so what's he doing? Is he listening to music? Was he texting someone? According to Lonnie, Tyler and Marshall have a big property. Living in that, leaving in that direction would take you towards the barn and the animals, but once you go beyond there, it's terrible. He said that the terrain is difficult to walk through, especially in the dark. Essentially, to get out of the area, you have to cross through the tree lines, and they're not, I mean, I walk them more than once, and they're not ones you just walk through, because you get caught by thorns and briars, Lonnie said. Authorities told Dateline that they have reviewed and analyzed additional security footage from the camera. They also canvassed the area and looked at other residents' security videos from the night of November 3rd. The remaining video that we've captured does not show Tyler, Investigator Schwartz said. So in the days following Tyler's disappearance, law enforcement took other investigative measures as well. Interviews were done with family and friends, verifying information, trying to determine if Tyler may have gone out of state, things of that nature. Investigator Schwartz said we were doing a lot behind the scenes work in addition to actually going out and trying to physically look for Tyler. He confirmed that authorities have had access to Tyler and Marshall's property at various times to check and recheck and follow up on tips. Marshall said they could come and go as they please. We've all listened to enough of these cases. They could do anything they needed to to figure out where he was, what happened, and all of that. And I knew, of course, that one of the first things they needed to do was roll me out. They were all over the place, and I wouldn't change any of that. Though Marshall said he did face quite a bit of speculation early on. Of course you did. It's always the spouse. Not always, but almost. The beginning was really rough and terrible, he said. Everyone, they always suspect the spouse. But Marshall said, I do know that the sheriff's department was just doing their job. There's a lot of emotions, and they are driving a lot of what is happening in that first 96 hours. I will tell you that once we were able to work through the situation and talk with Marshall and his attorney, we have nothing we have had nothing but cooperation, and that has not changed at all. Schwarz also told Dateline that while the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office is the main investigative agency, they have received help from other numerous agencies. The FBI was called in, provided a brief on the case to ensure that our investigation has been thorough. We've dotted the I's and crossed the T's, just making sure we're not leaving anything uncovered. The support from different areas of Tyler's life has also been immense. We contacted the gay community, Lonnie said. They told us they would do whatever they could. He loved working for the Department of Corrections. It was very, very clear that he loved his job. His co-workers have been amazing. They've help, helped with a ton of searches and just leading these efforts. Tyler's old military friends have also been helping with the search. He was a veteran and proud of it. He was still really close to a lot of people he met in the military, which has been apparent through these searches. 
Lancaster County Sheriff's Office has even done a podcast on Tyler's case. Investigator Schwartz said, I believe it was the idea of Captain Vic in conjunction with the family and friends to keep the story of Tyler alive. As of now, authorities have no knowledge that anything criminal occurred. Right now, this case remains an open and active missing persons investigation. We are continuing to take information that is provided, and we are continuing to research and analyze the data in hopes that we find Tyler. And then we will determine if any additional measures need to be taken. I read daily people who have gone, been gone a couple of weeks or a couple of months or a couple of years, and then they'll surface alive and well. And this is what I'd like to see in this case. Lonnie told Dateline that at this point he doesn't believe that his son is out there alive and well. I know him too well, and Tyler would never do this to us. He couldn't do it to his friends, to his co-workers, to his family. My son is dead. He is not missing. His body is missing. I just had a birthday. My wife just had a birthday. Tyler never would have missed those occasions. He wouldn't have missed Thanksgiving. He wouldn't miss Christmas. Rachel said, I think most of us believe somebody hurt Tyler. We don't know why. We don't know if it was a random act. And Lonnie agrees. I believe someone took his life. And I believe they took it on the third when he didn't come back home. Somebody did it. Somebody knows, he said. Tyler's husband Marshall said that this is something that no one would ever even imagine they were going to experience. And it has been hard because you miss them and you love them. And at the end of the day, they just want closure. Two things have to happen. His body has to be recovered, or somebody has to confess. Somebody has to give out the information that they have so we can have closure. And I pray for that. I mean, every day, every night, 100 times a day. Tyler is six foot one and 185 pounds with a runner style body. Pale skin, lots of freckles, and red hair. His hair was probably his most striking feature. He has tattoos, and he had a red beard at the time of his disappearance. Investigator Schwartz stressed that they want people to call in and provide tips. What we're looking for are those tips that are tangible and timely, that can tell us information that we can act on immediately and go find Tyler. If you or anyone you know have any information on the disappearance of Tyler Goodrich, please contact the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office at 402-441-6500 or Crime Stoppers at 402-475-3600. Both of those numbers will be listed in the description box down below. So, I am a little swayed at this case. I have to wonder if he was running and someone hit him and it was a hit and run and they I don't know I feel like if they would have just left him they would have found him you know I do think it was kind of strange that from what I saw Marshall well first he was cooperating and then he stopped cooperating and lawyered up but then he was cooperating with his lawyer that's just weird to me um I wish that the footage was a little bit more clear and I could never find out if there was like a camera at the front of the house that showed Tyler like returning to the house. You know, you saw him leaving out the back, but did he ever come back later on that night? And then maybe Marshall did something. I don't know. They had another child that I'm not sure of the age. Uh, and that's okay because it's a current, you know, he's a, a kid and he doesn't need to be involved, but... Marshall used uh, the little guy to say that that's the reason why he never went out searching, because he was at home with their kids. And while I do understand part of that, I feel like you also need to get out there and show that you're looking for your husband. I understand that you were maybe discussing divorce and your relationship wasn't going potentially the way that you thought it was going to go, but you still loved him, right? Get out there and try to find him. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and maybe you potentially didn't want to be the one.
because let me tell you what, I was everywhere looking for my mother when she was missing for that 14 hours. I drove every place that I could think of, and I can't imagine it being my spouse or something like that. And then to wait until 9.30 in the morning, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's something suspicious going on there, but I don't know what it is. I mean, they say that those redheads have fiery tempers, so maybe he really did, like, push Marshall or, you know, I can understand you're talking about divorce, you're in love, but it's just not working, and things do get heated. Why Marshall called 911 when he just got pushed a little? That's kind of strange to me. What happened prior to that that made you think you needed 911? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little suspicious, but I hope that Tyler is found. I am in no way saying that Marshall doesn't love him or that I don't even know. So let me know down below what you think. Do you think it was an accident? Do you think he broke his ankle and fell down a ravine or got hit by a car or got caught in those thorns? I feel like he would have been found if that was the case because they they mobilized so quickly. They had drones, they had helicopters, they had all this stuff. Like, if he, if he broke his ankle and he, he was still alive, you know, like infrared cameras and things, I don't know. Very strange, very odd, and I hope that Tyler's family gets some closure in the near future. Again, if you or anyone you know knows anything, please, please call Crime Stoppers or the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office. Um, it is my hope that one day one of my 